as well as lots of other types of training for TurboCAD, on paulthecad.com you'll also find tutorials to show you how to draw the uh, three assemblies that you can see in front of you. Uh, each tutorial is divided up into three films and the first of the nine films will follow this brief introduction. I don't presume uh, any deep understanding of TurboCAD in these films, although I do expect you to have an understanding of, um, of the copy tools, uh, work planes, and the way I use snaps. And there's other uh, videos around to show you how I do that, either on YouTube or on my site on pullwithacad.com. The films also come with a PDF uh, for those of you who like your instructions written down. And also in the collections of films that come with these tutorials is one to show you how to use the drafting palette. And I've used the V block and clamp here as an example to show you how that works. So for more information, paulthecad.com. This is the first of three Tutorials showing you how to use, uh, to draw the 90 degree elbow joint with the flanges at both ends. Uh, there is a PDF of this as well that you can buy from PaulTheCAD.com. I'm using <clears throat> TurboCAD Professional Platinum. I've made a few changes to the screen. I always get rid of the column of drawing tools down the left because there's a lot of stuff there I don't want. And of the modify column down the right, so I've dumped that again because most of it I'm not going to need. The 3D tools I've opened out on the right here. Above I've opened the design director because I'm going to create an extra uh, layer for my the construction lines that I will need. Uh, at the top, we've got standard views. Underneath that, you've got copying tools. The only other thing is I put the 2D tools that I'm going to be using on the right click of my mouse. So, to start. The outside measurements of the flange are 95 by 50. So the first thing I'll do is just draw a box, or a rectangle rather, 95 by 50. First, I'll draw the fillets for the edges. So I'll draw those using a circle. Ah, oh, one thing first. Oops, what have I done? Do that again. 95 by 50. Return. I forgot to hit return. Now, one thing is that um, if I click onto that rectangle, I can see that although it is a 2D rectangle, I'm drawing in 3D mode. And it's best when you're constructing 2D profiles that you're going to extrude to first of all draw them in 2D mode. So down the bottom here, after all these boxes for information, the second icon along is toggle 2D, 3D. So if I click onto that, now I'm in 2D mode. You can see the difference? If I toggle again, I'm in 3D mode. Okay, so it's 3D. 2D. Make sure you're in 2D. If you draw a thing in 3D, you are likely to have problems later on with things like work planes. So make sure you're in 2D. It's going to make life a lot easier for you. So first, the fillets. Circle by, by two points or double point circle. Go to the top here. Snap M. Now you want to make sure that the six o'clock position of this circle is vertically below the 12 o'clock. So if you put it vaguely where it's supposed to go, push down on uh, shift, then it will be correct. Then tab in and tab in your radius. And uh, my radius is 25. Hit return. Do the same over here. M snap, bring it out, put your finger on shift, tab. My radius is 10. Hit return. Now a tangential line between these two lines. Right click, tangent between two arcs. Make sure you get the right tool. If you get one of these by mistake, it's not going to work. So tangent between two arcs, click onto one, click onto the other. Hit the space bar. So we've drawn a quarter of our flange, which is going to be along here. Now, what 
I'm going to do now is split these circles because I only need parts of them. So modify, split. I'm going to split this circle from that point, which is a quadrant point, to this point, which is an intersection. I've still got the tool, so I can select this circle. That's an intersection. That's a quadrant point. Hit the space bar. Select the two parts or two arcs now that I don't want. Hit delete. Now these three are separate lines, so I need to join them. So modify, join polyline. Click on to each one individually. One, two, three. Here it's saying, oh, what do you want? Well, it's the arc I want. Hit the finish flag. That's now one. And I want another one of those mirrored here and there and there. So select it, mirror copy. Go up here, I can hit Q or M, doesn't make any difference. Q, bring that down. I can do M for this point here, or put my finger on Shift and click. While this is still selected, put my finger on Shift, select that part, mirror copy over here. I can do M, bring that along, another M, or finger on Shift, left click. <clears throat> Now I'm going to draw some construction lines to locate the holes. So I'm going to go to M here and M there, M here, M there. These four parts are separate at the moment, so I need to join those. Modify, join polyline. One, two, three. Four, finish flag. Now I need a central hole and two fixing holes, either end. So let's draw the fixing holes first. Circle by center point. That's I for an intersection here. And I'll draw the holes, which are <clears throat> seven radius. Tab, seven. Hit return. Hit the space bar. Select the circle. Now, I want one of these over here and one over there. So I'm going to send this one over in the delta direction by 30. So in the delta box, 30. And I want another one over here. So I click onto this tool here, which is make a copy, or I can find it by right clicking my mouse, make copy. And now in delta X, I'll type minus 60. There's my two circles. Make sure you remember to turn off, make a copy. Now for the hole for the pipe, right click, circle by center point, I for intersection, and then draw this, which is, I think, radius 15. Type in here, tab, one, five, hit return. Now what do I want? <clears throat> is to, um, I don't need these construction lines anymore, and I could just delete them all, but I quite like keeping construction lines. You never know, you might need them later. Um, so in the design director, I'm going to create a new layer, which I'm going to call construction lines. Okay, there it is. And I'm going to select them. I'll do them separately here, although you could uh, do them at the same time. So I've selected those two, and in the box here, in this column, click onto that, which puts it on that layer. And then the outside rectangle, I'll do the same. And then if I click on to the little eye, the visibility, they disappear. So everything looks okay now. I can look at it in 3D. Now, if I selected the whole thing, right click and went to properties, 3D, I could type in a height here and it would indeed be 3D. But what I'd have is four 3D objects. I'd have an outside part and three cylinders. And so if I wanted those cylinders to be holes, which I do, uh, I'd have to then subtract them. So there's a quicker way around this. Here, 
there's a tool called Simple Extrude in the 3D objects. Now, if I use the 3D Extrude, so the 3D Extrude looks like that down the bottom left when I open it as a default. It means I can click onto any part and extrude it either by eye or by typing a, a height in here. However, within the 3D Extrude, this first icon is use Compound Extrude. Now that means that any closed shape, if there are other closed shapes inside it, the, the package will um, interpret the, the shapes inside as holes, not as solid shapes. So that is what we want here. These we want to be holes. We want the outside to be a solid, but we want these to be holes. So we're going to select all of these four parts. Now, normally when you select multiple items in a drawing, you, you select the first one and then hold down shift and then select the others. With this, you, you hold down shift first. So I put my finger on shift. So make sure that compound extrude is on. Hold down shift. Click on to one, two, three, four. And then I can extrude it. And I can do it by eye. But actually here, I'm going to type in the height. There it is. If I look at it in hidden line, there we go. And in hidden line, I can still see these circles. So the thing to remember is when you extrude a 3D profile, you still have the, the 2D profile. So I'm going to select those 2D profiles and put them on a construction line. There we go. And I'll turn off the grid. And um, there's our flange. So far, that's uh, that's it. That's the end of part one.